we have some cutting edge virtual production to do and I suggest you get cozy because we're traveling to NAB in Las Vegas to launch a brand new feature of Lightcraft Jet Set. We're about to cause some disruption here and get some strong reactions from the 60,000 filmmakers that are expected to be there. Before we get started, let me catch you up about Lightcraft Jet Set, the sponsors of this video. Their app allows you to do full professional virtual production in an iPhone. I've been covering them a lot on the channel recently because their app is truly mind blowing and there are tons of features to actually cover. I've spent the last week putting together our NAB demo, which is going to be a driving scene. We're going to have people coming to our booth at NAB and they'll see someone sat in front of a green screen, but on the live render preview, that person will be sat in a CG car, which is traveling down the road. What's been cool is working with the Lightcraft team over time zones while they invent their new feature, which is going to be Genlock software genlock. So when we preview our composite in Unreal Engine, the virtual and real elements are perfectly locked together. But it's not quite there yet, we're still in the middle of testing it all, and we have two days before I travel to Vegas. I've got my fingers crossed, this is just a nice smooth ride. Okay, I have to catch my train, I'll see you when I get to London. Bye! Next step on the journey is King's Cross. And obviously I'm not Josh, I'm Dan, I'm the cameraman. Heading over to meet Josh off the train. No, it's happy. Oh no, another nerd. And there's Josh just getting off the there train. You ready for round two? Let's go and do this thing. Why on earth did you agree to do this again? I've got no idea. More than halfway there. So I'd got Genlock working before I left the studio and the Lightcraft team liked my car demo, but they did think the driving was a little safe. So this is me on the flight to Vegas adding loads more cars to the scene so I can send my hero car down into oncoming traffic. Perfectly unsafe. And before I knew it, we were in Vegas traveling to NAB for setup day. There are so many really big name companies here. This is so much bigger than BSC. I'm here with Bill Warner and Elliot Mack, co-founders of Lightcraft Jet Set. This is actually the first time here in Vegas that we have met in the flesh, so it's really, really good to meet you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? I'm Elliot Mack, started off in robotics. I originally designed the iRobot Roomba. A love of motion pictures and understanding how difficult they were to do and wanting to make that better, that led to Lightcraft. I'm Bill Warner, I'm a founder of Avid Technology and um, wildfire communications. With Avid, I loved making videos and I just couldn't live with how hard linear editing was. I finally said, I can't wait, and I started Avid. I rented my first little eight foot by eight foot cubicle from Bill way back in 2004. 2004, yeah, 20 years ago. What is the main ethos, the purpose of this thing? Making it possible to create. Help make a filmmaker be able to make something without just getting completely torn apart by the myriad of details that otherwise come up, reach up, and, and you know, drag you down. What moment was it that made you realize, oh, the phone, the iPhone, that's the way forward? How did that come about? I'd bought a, a, an iPhone 11 Pro, it was actually you know, this one, right? And fired it up and realized, wait a second, that, that's, that's actually, I mean, is, is it as good as our dedicated custom machine, you know, machine vision overhead markers? Not quite as good, but it's real close. But it was that, this is working. I've finished recording all of the dangerous traffic in my scene and I'm about to record the main car. So there's lots for me to swerve and dodge. Trust the Xbox controller. Press play. Just stop playing games. Get Shush, man, I'm busy. <laughs> turn, 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 boom. Oh. I can't even play my own map. <laughs> we can tell you don't have a driving license. He's right. <laughs> In front of me is everything we're going to be using for our camera rig, for our demo, starting with the Z-Cam body. It's a really, really nice little camera and we're using the Iron Glass 28mm lens. Same lens they used on Dune Part 2, so I'm going to be really careful with that. On top of this camera is going to be the star of the show, which is, of course, the app that's going to be running on the iPhone, Lightcraft Jet Set. Yeah, that will yeah, be mounted as close to the front of this lens as possible to help our calibration, because we're going to be using Jet Set Cine, which has a lot of the really nice pro features. In order for Genlock to work, we're going to be using the second most important piece, which is the Axiom Simo Pro. This will get the video signal from the camera and pipe it into the iPhone, right into the Jet Set app. And at that point, it's going to embed timecode in 
both the tracking data and the video data, then send those over to Unreal. The time code is time of day time code from the iPhone, but if you didn't want to use that for any reason, you could use a tentacle sync. We have one with us just in case, but it's not essential. You can get Chenlock just with the Jet Set app, so you don't really need any really, really expensive gear to do this. You just need the app and your camera. Here we go, day one, and our demos start about 10 minutes from now, so that's very exciting. We have had a spanner in the works though. My driving scene isn't ready to demo it yet. I don't know why it was working back in the studio. Something's going on in that project and I need to solve it, but we can't use it right now. That's when things took a left turn. Though it wasn't the original plan, people were loving an X-Wing demo that we had running on an FX3. Oh my god. Because the FX3 is so light, people were just passing that camera back and forth between them, sitting in front of the green screen and pretending to be in an X-Wing fighter. They were doing wide shots, close-ups, and pretending it was an X-Wing bonnet mount. What's incredible is seeing how creative people can get when the technology just gets out of the way. Then the heavy hitters showed up. So that's the 24mm of this camera. Wow. Yeah. Having Shane Hilbert in the booth with us was incredible. I mean, these are people who you've seen online for years, you've followed their work, and there they are standing in front of you, and you get to talk to them about cool filmmaking tech. I love it. Then we blew his mind. We showed him a scene by Alex Hanneman, an amazing compositor. His scene is set in a factory. Uh, so what it actually existed. All right, let's, let's Then we revealed to Shane that it was in fact all filmed on a green screen in a barn in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Holy <laughs> shit. And day two was no different. We had some incredible people coming through the booth. Wait a second. <laughs> it's not green. What I just don't want is for people to get to that stage of writing something they really care about, yeah. and then the mental block comes down and goes, I'll never be able to do that. Four years ago, I started using Unreal Engine, and that, that's gone now, because I can just say, well, I'll just make it. It might limit me to shooting on green for a lot of stuff, but yeah. I'd rather have the thing made than, than it rattling around in my head forever. Thank you very much. We've met so many people. We just met the DOP of Jurassic Park and Mandalorian season three. But I mean, the guy has done a lot. It's not showing any signs of letting up. We're just doing the X-Wing demo right now, which everyone loves, obviously. Yeah, back to it. We were doing demo after demo, getting incredible reactions. Oh. <laughs> it's only $80 a month. This is incredible. They're gonna try to shut you guys down. But the truth is, the only thing people were seeing on the phone and the TVs around them was the composite created in the app itself. It wasn't connected to Unreal Engine, and it was a far cry from the Genlock demo that I was hoping to showcase here. To leave things the way they were, I would be cheating myself. Luckily, I have a hard time letting go of things. <laughs> I had to get my car scene working. I'm staying up a, a while, I think. I'm gonna try and crack the performance of this street scene. Because it's a night scene, I could turn this into a day scene. And what that might do for performance is it means I can turn off all of the street lights, the point lights in this scene, and there are a lot. And I think if I just take those out of the equation, this is going to run a lot smoother. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep cracking through this. So it's gonna be stripped back quite considerably. It's the morning of day three and we are about to get my driving scene working. And people are just starting to come in, which means we have a bit of a race against time on our hands. We are that close. Here we go. Look straight ahead. Pulling out of the driveway there. No, not backwards, <laughs> you <laughs> nutter. <laughs> So I'm finally getting my genlocked car sequence working. It's uh, been a bit of a bumpy ride getting here. It's really, really nice to see it working. Completely in sync, tracking and video. I'm so happy. The work that we put into this seems to be paying off. In cinematic work, you want to be able to move the camera. You will need to be able to track where the camera is going to put together a virtual image and a live action image. It's been the same problem the whole whole time. But you want freeform. You want to be able to pick up a camera and run around handheld, and it just didn't didn't exist. So we started building it. Coming from the point of like, I want to make something beautiful and want to make something great. As you go toward it, what are the things getting in your way? And the things that are the roadblocks are the things that we work on to solve. You're looking at uh, two thirds of the company right now, right? Greg Cockroft is in his farmhouse in Michigan, and he's writing all the code. We've taken, you know, virtual production from ninety-five thousand dollars to free. And it's better. The free version is better. 
Jet Set. What is next in the pipeline? Can you give us any information on what you're planning? Because it's got a lot of features, but you know, what what else are you doing? Greg's doing refinement tracking right now, so uh, we'll refinement wait. tracking. Yep, automated automated subpixel post production tracking. And I talked to him this morning, and oh. he said it's going really well. It's going really well. Oh <laughs> yeah, all right, there we go. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you one other thing, which is sort of a dream of ours. It's it's going to take time, but I really think we can do it. In the long run, we can build the technology that helps people make the movies and also sell the movies, show the movies, and and interact with their audience. We are now coming to the end of NAB. How has it felt? We've had luminary after luminary come through and the reaction has been past anything I could have ever hoped. And you're always curious whether these things that you put into something transmit. And I think at the show, what I saw is, is people heard it. Well, that was a tough three days, but we managed it. I said we'd cause some disruption, and we definitely got some strong reactions from people. The amount of people who came to the booth and left shaken by what they'd seen was, was really high. And I know why, and it's because we're putting virtual production in the pockets of basically anyone with an iPhone and allowing people to tell the stories that they never would have been able to otherwise.